Everybody, we're going to hear three really great violas, all alumni of Apple Hill, Jaina, Karen, and Elsie. Here they are. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Hi, Jaina. Thank you so, so much. That was beautiful, beautiful, Thank beautiful. You. Why don't you tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, 
if you've been to Apple Hill, how many times you've been there and uh, maybe what this piece was that you played? So yes, I am Jaina. I'm from Keene, New Hampshire. Um, I'm 20 years old. And right now I study at Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. I'll be a junior in the fall, unfortunately online, but it'll still happen. Ah, so and, you're going to be um, online. Oh, yeah, boy. it's all online, but yeah. I'm going to make the best of it. Yeah. And I've been going to Apple Hill since I was 12. So eight years, that didn't happen this year. Um, <laughs> and... Yeah, super sad. <laughs> and you're kind of doing it now, so you can count this year. Yeah, yeah. Dana, this are you going to live in Keene? Or are you going to live by Boston Conservatory next year? I'm going to go live up because I have an apartment down there. So I just figured okay. I'm going to go pretend like I'm yeah. doing it. Yeah, that's so amazing to be do everything online. Well, we're going to do our thing online. We're going to work for maybe 15 or 20 minutes on what you played. And before we just started to plunge in, I just wanted to say how much I liked your performance quite a bit. And oh, I think it's um, I, I think it's a really specific piece. And I thought you brought out, mood-wise, and I thought you brought out a lot of great stuff. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some next steps for you. I just wonder, was wondering if you think you have some next steps with this piece. Um, it's kind of difficult because um, I don't have all of the techniques on viola right now that I okay. that are supposed to be there, and yeah. so I'm not really sure what the next steps would be. Probably just sounding better on viola, I guess. Okay. Well, you sound good in the viola. Just so people know what what that's all about. Jane is a violinist. Oh, and yeah. You, sorry. What did you do? Did you play viola for a year or a semester last year? I I played it for a semester and then I wanted to continue, so I just they let okay. me keep the viola and play in some awesome. ensembles. Okay, yeah, I think it's good. I think you're a beautiful violinist still. So, <laughs> um, so let's play a little bit. Let's just work a little bit maybe on the first third of the piece because it, it actually can apply to the whole whole piece and. Um, just so people that are listening, this is something that I think is really important about a one-on-one -on -one kind of uh, thing that's happening now. And that's there's gonna be a lot of discussion, quite a bit of experimentation, and a lot of talking back and forth about how to implement on an instrument what a person wants to do musically. So that's what I wanted to talk about. When you hear this piece or think about this piece when you're working on it, what was the mood or the feeling that you were trying to get across? Um, I think somber. Somber, most yeah. Of it, yeah. Yeah. And then like for some of the parts, I'm not sure which part, but to bring out just some different colors of that feeling. I like that. Somber, sad, lots of different colors. And do you feel like the piece is sort of saying all that from an inner point of view, or is it all out there? I think it's more of an, I feel like it's more of an inner. Yeah, I do too. And so when you think of somber, do you think of, I know this is so leading questions, but do you think of like jumpy, happy, or is everything really sort of level, sort of legato smooth? Level legato, yeah. Okay. That's pretty much what I wanted to work on with you is, is I feel the legato thing too. And you're doing a lot of separate bows, which is fine, but I think we can work a little bit on how to be even more legato, especially on a viola. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a lot more weight on the viola, how you're gonna balance that. And if you feel like it's too frustrating to do this separate, maybe we can do more slurs. Mm. But this is all an experiment. This is what a lesson's like. You just try everything. It's not like you have to do legato kind of thing. Yeah. So let's try, let's do a little bit. Let's like pay, play the first phrase, okay? Okay. How would you like to try this? Um, let's just, I have this idea. 
on an open string, just go do the first three notes, B, da, da. Let's try it on your D string. My, my D string? Yeah. Okay. Good, okay, so when you make your bow change, stay in the string with this finger. Yeah, and you, you're gonna stay in the string and you're gonna keep your bow moving and you're gonna slow, you're gonna have a, a seamless bow change. You know what I mean? Like instead of ba, ba, it's ba, di, a really slow change. Yeah, so now try that, yeah. Try that with your fingering. Yeah, good, I think it's good. Even slower bow, hardly, we should even, we should never, we shouldn't even be aware that you're changing a bow. Hardly any movement when you change. Yeah. Now try that first phrase again, thinking about your bow changes like that. You're gonna stay in the string and you're gonna have slow bow changes and a slow bow throughout. Yeah, yeah that's, that I thought was really good. So let's okay. try the whole phrase thinking about that. Okay, that I thought was good. I don't know, do you hear the difference? You it feel felt it? better. Yeah, so I feel like you're doing what I like to call, um, it's really stupid, but your bow arm, which is great, <laughs> it's working for you. So all this work that you've done over the years, first with the leads and now at Boston Conservatory with Richter, it's working for you. That's why you've been doing it. So you have a lot of skill. So the next thing I think that might help uh, legato for anybody is to think about the tempo and the flow of the piece because, you know, instead of yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're a beautiful musician. So now it's time to work on the flow. So we've got the bow changes, you've got the legato thing, now let's work on the flow. I, I used to have an ant flow, so I always think of, whenever I say the word flow, I always think of my ant flow. So think of my ant flow, she flowed. Okay. <laughs> now move. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, you know, ya -da -dee. you know, you want to go, -dee. you don't want to hold, -dee. -dee. you can let go of that note. You can have a okay. full bow, let it go, -dee, so that you can move here. Ya -dee -da, ya -da -dee -da -dee. You know what I mean? Okay. it moving yeah that do you understand that so yeah. now what i'm hearing from you is and the leaps are getting bigger then it's yeah so oh my god so let's Let's do this whole thing again and let's go on to the next part.
Yeah, so Jaina. Really melodic and keep it moving because when it gets da da di da da we've lost the flow. So can you start in that measure? Yeah, so Jaina, Jaina, good. You can bring that out. You can stretch out those phrases that move the thing before. Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Very helpful. Okay, good. Good. Good, okay, good. Yay, good. <coughs> good, good. So I want to start there again. And now we're going to talk a little bit about your, you as the performer and you, me, the audience. So you're trying to project something to me. What is it in this section? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's probably a good thing to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, that, well, just if I sing it, you tell me what it feels like to you. Mm. So what kind of a feeling do you hear? Do you feel when you hear that? Is it beautiful? It's melodic. It is, what is I it? I think it's a little could be reminiscent um and um not the, i wouldn't say this part is super melancholy but i would just i would yeah i'd say reminiscent what does that mean um i, I th i'm pretty sure i could be wrong <laughs> but i think <laughs> it means um like just remembering and ah so you feel like it's kind of nostalgic that's, nostalgic. The word, that's what i was looking for okay. And is it, is it beautifully melodic, flowing, or is it angry, or what do you, is it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I think it's definitely. It's, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So this is the time for you to play beauty. So mm -hmm. in this case, the beautiful stuff is really slow bow, keep your bow cha dough, uh, changes smooth, because you want it to be, and move the tempo, and play the phrases. So now what you have to do, because you're there and I'm here and we're online, which is even harder, you need to <laughs> double project what you want to do. You have to project even more. Oh, okay. So you have to be even more legato. And you just, you took some time. Da, da, dee, da, dee. Take more time because okay. I'm like, I, I'm like, oh, I love Bach. And I think Jane is so cool, but I, when she takes the time there, I'm not sure. I want to be like there with you at the audience. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Jane, I hope that that's where you were going to take some time. Da, da, oh. da, da, dee, da, dee, okay. Da, da. Yeah. And keep it moving. Yeah, I think you're playing really legato, which 
I okay. should say a lot. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Boo. Quiet. And that's where you're going to come down really, really slow, really okay. soft. Good. Let's try that once more. And All let's right. go on. So for people that are listening that they're like, well, now it's going to happen for Jaina. Well, now Jaina's <laughs> going to figure out, she's going to go practice <laughs> and you're going to practice and you're going to implement everything that we just talked about, but your own way, because mm -hmm. you're a skilled player and now you're a junior in college. And that's the juniors in college and seniors in college. And for the rest of your life, you're going to be getting a lot of feedback. And you have to figure out how to do it your own way. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to stop soon. But I was wondering if we could just do the beginning to where we just stopped. Sure. And while you're, this, the other thing I think a lot of people um, would, would be interested in, we're going to go through the things you're going to do the things that we talked about, but while you're playing, you're not going to think about it. You're not going to think at all. <laughs> you're going to be at one, but have a super awareness of the following things. You're going to play really legato. You're going to have the slowest bow changes ever. <laughs> you're going to have weight and have a deep sound, which you'll get if you have your slow bow, okay? <laughs> You're going to be slowing. You're going to play around with the tempo. Sometimes you're going to slow down to bring a phrase in. You're going to, uh, let's see, what's the third thing? Oh, you're going to take time and speed up some of those sections. And you're going to play inward, somber, and beautifully. Eloquent sadness. I like to think about this piece. Yeah. So, so you need to let all that come inside of you for a minute and breathe it in, and then let's play it. And you're not going to think. I'm not going to what? You're not going to think. Mm -hmm. You're going to be aware. Congratulations. Thank you. I thought you did a lot of stuff that we talked about. I especially loved the whole beginning. I thought that was structured beautifully. Um, while you were playing, I actually thought of something that I think is really powerful. And that's that you as a performer, you are communicating quite a lot to me. And even in a setting where I'm supposed to be sort of apart from it and be observing, I stopped. I got into it. I got into oh, what yay. you were what you were saying to me. And I think that's probably the most important thing for you right now is that you're someone that's an artist 
in this case a musician, and you're communicating stuff to me. I think the beauty is that you're communicating Bach, but your feelings about Bach. So my suggestion for you in the future with this piece is to do what we just did. It's like being a detective, you know, like figure out where you want to take time, what you want to <laughs> See, the dog likes it too. Um, so that's how I'm feeling about what you just did. It was great. Thank so, you so much. Oh, well, thank you. Bravo to you. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other in person. Yeah, hopefully soon. Okay. All right. Good luck, Jaina. Thank you. Bye. Bye. so much for playing and for playing a piece that I have to admit because I'm, I'm such a know-it-all I think I know everything about music and all the music for viola and I had never heard of this piece so mm -hmm. I am thrilled to be able to 
know this piece and work with you on it. I thought you sounded great. I really did. I was really admired so many things. But before we get started, um, would you please tell us who you are and what you're doing and where you live and how much, you know, your Apple Hill history? Okay. Um, I'm Karen Collins. I live in Tampa, Florida, which is not that great of a place right at the moment. Um, and I've been going to Apple Hill, I think, this year, if I had gone, would have been my sixth year in a row. Oh, wow. And uh, I am a student at University of South Florida studying music. I'm going for a second bachelor's. So I started this past year, so I'm about to be a sophomore nice. in college for the second time. Wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic. And so when you, uh, did you pick this piece? How did this all happen? Um, my teacher, before I started college, this was the last piece he gave me like last spring or something. And I worked on it during the summer and I, I played it for my jury um, in the fall and kind of put it away. And when I was thinking about what, what to play for this, I just thought out of the other things that I was working on, this just, I just wanted to dust this off because I knew I could do a better job having gone through the whole year at school and just wanted to see how it sounded and, and what you would have to say about it. So, um, if you don't mind, and you can tell me, uh, you, don't, you don't have to answer this question, but because um, you said you wanted to do a better job. So, to me, that means you're looking at your next steps. Uh, mm -hmm. what, is it, what is it that you think about when you think about your next steps with this piece? And maybe it applies to all your, your playing, I don't know. Um, with this piece, with all my playing mostly, but definitely with this piece, is learning how to play more expressively, really... Um, have longer lines and 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 really say something with each line instead of here we are and now we're louder and then we're softer and then we stop and, and that kind of thing I'm just trying to I've heard some really nice versions of this and and I would like to learn how to play more expressively and that's pretty much all right arm stuff okay I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the bow okay because I like to think of the bow as your handwriting, as your signature. Mm -hmm. uh, the left hand, it's, you know, there's a lot to do with the left hand and we all have to work on it, but it's pretty much up and down, sideways, plucking, you know, articulation. And of course, playing in tune is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I don't know, kind of more standard. This is your signature. And if you're like me, who still loves to play around with my signature because I'm always signing contracts and all kinds of stuff. I'm always like, I think I can do better on my signature. So I like that you want to do some work on your right hand. Um, have, are you familiar with the three principles of the bow that I like to call the three principles of the bow? I've, yeah, I've heard of them. Okay, so weight, speed, and pressure. And so when I heard you play, I thought, she's got the weight thing down because you play the viola and you have to have a slow bow. And I noticed your arm is very, very weighty and good. You're taking advantage of a lot of stuff that's already inherent, the tension and gravity and everything. I wanted to work a little bit on speed mostly, but maybe figure out where your pressure thing is too. Okay. So, um, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is kind of weird. All right. There might be some weird things that we're going to do. The first thing I wanted to do is just to get you to experience how much you have to actually hold your bow. Okay. How a person needs to hold their bow when they're playing. Because the tendency sometimes is to let it rest on the string. There's a lot of weight and it just goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, maybe like two measures or three measures, if you could play this piece with the bow in the air, but you're never touching the string. Okay. So in a way you're gonna be resisting gravity in a different way. All right. Oh, and sorry, before you start, what you're gonna be doing is feeling what it's like to hold your bow. Okay. That's <laughs> strange. It's really weird. But I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you something right now. 
Okay. To me, you're using speed much more in the air. Hmm. So can you tell me what it was like to feel holding your bow, like at the point, were you aware of your index finger more? Were you aware of anything different or? I was, I mean, yeah, at the point it, um, because I'm not, because I'm in the air, it takes more to hold it level or, you know, to keep yeah. it from flat. Yeah. I, th I think I think that was good. I was so nervous because I wasn't sure if it was a good idea to do that. Um, so I'm glad it helped. So now what I want you to do is play the same measures mm -hmm. on the string. You'll be, but pretend that you're in the air and with hardly any pressure. So move your bow faster than you can ever imagine. Okay. With no pressure. All right. Me, let's stop for a minute. To me, there's a lot of sound there. So that means you're, there's a lot of weight. So even lighter, like play on the side of the hair, one hair, so that you can move your bow as fast as you feel like it. Okay. Let's go back now. Now you're going to play the same thing. How did that feel, by the way? It felt weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Was, oh my gosh. No, of course it felt weird. But did you feel a little freer or did anything good? Yeah. I felt freer. Okay. I, I didn't like the sound that I was making. No, no, of course <laughs> not. Because you're used to your big sound, your big, big viola sound. So, of course. Um, now I'm going to ask you to do this other weird thing. I feel like you're going to hate me after this lesson. Um, you're going to play, have your fingers on the bow, but you're going to pick up your middle finger. Okay. And do the same exact thing. Just play. Don't worry about the sound, but feel what's happening with your right hand. Okay. Good. That actually, there was a lot of difference in the way you managed your bow then. Yeah. Do you know why? I mean, can you tell us what was different? Uh, my, my fourth finger was having to do a lot more work to, to keep things, to kind of steer it as well as keep it on the string. Awesome. Because if you, this is something for everybody to see. If you take your bow, I, lo I love what you just said. If you take your bow and just hold it out and then pick up, just let whatever happens, happens. Keep all your fingers down and pick up your pinky ones. <laughs> but what happens is the point wants to go down. And so when you were in touch with your pinky, you were balancing your bow. Yeah. And that's what I felt when I heard the piece the first time. A lot of the stuff that we're talking about, we can now add. Okay. Because you're in such a good place. You have the sound. That to me is the biggest thing about the viola. So now you're gonna have all your fingers, you're gonna do something weird. You're gonna hold your bow the way you usually do, but okay. you're gonna be thinking about how much you're holding it, your pinky, almost pretend that this finger's up. Okay. Maybe a little more in the string, but not much. Remember, you have a big sound. Okay. That's something for you to remember. You have a very big sound, so you don't need to force anything. You're pretty awesome. Just a little bit more pressure, and you want to be free to move your bow. I loved the way you moved your bow the last time. All right, let's see if I can do something like that now. Let's stop, let's, let's stop for a minute. Right now, there's a lot of this weight. So remember yeah. this finger. If you need to, pick it up for a couple of minutes, but you move your bow fast. Okay.
Good. So what sound, now we're going to work on some of the colors that you wanted. I thought that was good. So how do you want to start this? It says forte, but what kind of forte is it? Because what's the mood of this piece, do you think? Well, it seems to go through a bunch of different moods. Um, but in the beginning, I, I see that forte not as loud so much as strong. And like yeah. almost kind of a, a clear viola sound as opposed to a like a breathy yeah. sound. I mean, what do you think this piece is? Is it happy-go-lucky? Is it sad? Is it angry? What do you think it is? Um, well, I don't, I mean, me meditation, but it's from a ballet too. Um, it's hard to say, but it sounds like a daydream that kind of goes awry uh -huh. um, in the middle and then kind of comes back down to earth. I mean, there's obviously some, some angst in the middle of this piece. Yeah. Is it an inner kind of feeling or is it all outer? Is it, is it basically someone that's speaking from their inner self rather than it's all out there? I would say, yeah, I would say that, uh, but they're going through different changes, yeah. going through a narrative as they're doing it that is from inside of them. So I would think now your forte needs to be strong, but it's inner. Okay. So think about the kind of sound you want to get, and that's also going to affect your bow, how you hold it, weight versus speed, all that kind of stuff. Try okay. it again. Let's try a little bit of it. All right. Thinking of colors. <laughs> That had a lot of control in it. But what I see in my part is a big diminuendo. Uh, okay. You can do more of that. Remember that you're a performer. You've made the decision to be a performer, which means that you're standing on a somewhere and you're projecting to me and I'm in the audience and I don't know you or the piece or Hindemith. So you want to project as much as you can. So performers always have to exaggerate much more than they think. So the beginning, I think you really need to exaggerate the inner, like play much softer than you think. And then the end of that phrase, very soft and even slow it, like weak. But slow it down. Okay. And then, be -a -da -da -da. Yeah. yeah. We'll try that. You're going to exaggerate now. All right. You know what I thought? I thought the beginning phrase was great. Okay. I felt like you were you were doing a lot of the bow stuff that we talked about. I feel like there's one thing that maybe um, I don't know how you are, but at the beginning of anything, are you like, ah! and then you start? Yeah, yeah. it's like what sound is going to come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And remember, you're in control here. It's like, your, it's your hand, it's your arm, it's your breath, it's your everything. And you want to convey all that to me. Nothing is foreign or outside of you. Mm -hmm. So um, I think a really, really, really good thing to do is to breathe out before you play. Okay. And you're going to breathe out in the spirit of this piece. So we discussed it. It's kind of inner. It's 
not a big forte. It's a warm sound, which you have. Um, and you're going to breathe in that spirit. So. Okay. Try and see if breathing helps you. All right. Yeah. Karen, I like that. Okay. So, the next thing you're going to do is think of yourself as a conductor. So mm -hmm. when a conductor conducts, they're like, boom. Mm -hmm. you can do that with your bow. You breathe. I thought you breathed. Is that the right? Breathed out <laughs> beautifully. I knew exactly what you were going for. But have your bow in this up. Yeah. Oh, start yeah. off the string then? Yeah, and place it where exactly where you want to with the right sound, with your pinky and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So many good things, so many good things. Um, before we stop, I wanted to just do this. Do you have numbers? Yeah. Yeah, you know where number one is? What, what number one is? Mm -hmm. dee, da, da, dee, da, slow down. Da, da. Breathe. Dee, ba. Yeah. Can you try that? There. All right. I think that's another spot where you can exaggerate. <laughs> you know, I love the way you, you were in total control when you hit that note, that board. Yeah. Good. I think we have to stop. Yeah, I, I think know. so. So thank you. Thank you. Good luck with everything. So what's happening with school? Are you going to go online or? Yeah, we're going online. I mean, school is opening or trying to open kind of in a hybrid face to face, but you can opt to do everything online and like uh, orchestra is all it's all chamber music. And yeah. I'm doing it online just because schools, I just don't feel comfortable going yeah. up to school. Um, yeah. And, and almost I mean, we went online starting in the spring anyway. So like all our spring courses have already been we've already been, you know, we know what it's like to take some of the like, theory courses and things online. Yeah. So yeah, anything could happen though in the next week and a half. So <laughs> we don't know. But. Well, good luck. I think one of the things to do now is go in a practice room and experiment with more with some of the stuff we did, like holding your bow, playing up in the air, keeping this finger up. I okay. think playing without any pressure, like moving your bow fast, it frees you up. And then when you're playing, like just what you did now, it's, it all is part of the whole thing. So the breathing, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Good luck, thank you. It's good thank to see you, good to hear you.
thank you, thank you. I think you sound great. Uh, for those people that don't know the viola repertoire, this is one of the major viola concertos. And so um, I think it's great that you decided to share this with us. But before we begin, would you please tell us who you are and where you're, where you are and what you're doing and how long you've been at Apple Hill and all that stuff? Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Elsie. This would have been my third year at Apple Hill. Oh. Okay. And I guess kind of is at home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right now I'm in Urbana, Illinois, but I'm soon to be moving to Boston uh, in just a few days, <laughs> I guess, ah. or in a couple weeks, basically. Yeah. Um, and I'll be going there to study at Boston Conservatory with Lila Brown. In the fall. Awesome. Lila. I love Lila. Great. <laughs> Good for you. So we're going to work a little bit on the Hindemith. And, um, I thought you sounded great. I think it's a very wonderfully exciting, dramatic, volatile piece of music. And I thought you sounded fantastic and did all the stuff that I love. Um, I wanted to work a little bit today um, on the drama of the piece with you. And I was wondering if that was okay with you and do you see that as a next step for you in terms of this piece? Yeah, definitely. I think it's hard to get past the technical stuff. I know. I think you, you know what? I think you're past the technical stuff. In fact, I think it'd be great if we can let go of some of that technical stuff because in a way you can, this piece is so crazy that you could sort of like let it all out a little bit and forget about it because you can play it. There's absolutely no, no problem there. So, um, the, the very first section up until A, the viola is totally alone, right? Nothing is yeah. happening. You walk down on the stage, everyone's applauding and they're going like, wow, who is this person? What are they gonna do? And then you play this incredibly gigantic fortissimo chord. So that was the first thing I wanted to work on, to get is how you wanna play that chord to give us the, scope of who you are, but also what the piece is all about. So my feeling is to be, to be really dramatic and a chord is to spell it like, yeah, you know, really exciting. Like attack okay. it. Okay. I like that. I think now, yes, I love that. I think now is, here you are, Give yourself the kind of cue that you need. And for us to see, like, if you're in the air, like, boom, we're going to be like, oh my God, before you piece even starts, we're going to be like, something gigantic is going to happen. And plus, you're preparing yourself. I love that. So I personally, I've been told that I'm dramatic, but um, I personally, <laughs> I think you are very dramatic. I've seen you at Apple Hill. I think you're a lot of fun and a lot, and there's a lot of drama there. I think for me to get your drama, you need to exaggerate even more because you're on the stage, I'm here. And uh, so I think to spell that chord like, bo yum and hold it as long as you possibly can before you go to the next chord. And let's go on this time. Okay. Good, let's Good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, that was great. So there's this German title to this piece. Have you translated what it means? Yeah, Between Mountains and Deep Valley. Yeah. So to me, that's another uh, indication of the drama because it's the mountains, it's the peaks, it's getting to the peaks, it's the valleys going down to the valleys, climbing back up. So to me, that first chord, the yum, hold it to the end. 
You don't need to let up on the bow in your shift because you have a good shift. If you let up on the bow, we're going to be like, oh, she shifted. But if you keep it in the string all the way to the point, shift, here's the leap. Take your time. Now we're climbing down. And then we're climbing. We're going down again. I think you could bring that up. Bring that out more. Okay. Good. You know what? It's good. It's really good. It's really good. And I feel like you let go of the technique, of worrying about the technique. I thought that first shift, I didn't even know you shifted. That's how smooth it was. Because you kept your bow on the string. Okay. Yeah. Elsie, we're going to take this one step further. And you're going to almost step out of where you are into the entire room. This Elsie okay. is going to be in every corner. So there's no you're alone there's no tempo there's nothing you just want to bring out the drama and the mountains and the valleys so the take your time i think you can do that a lot more i really do Good. Yes. So you in your practice room now, you're going to experiment with that more and more and more and feel more comfortable with all that kind of drama. So for instance, yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But you know, there's no need to rush that. Think of it as very, very Germanic. It's very much in tempo. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but yeah, yeah. But I loved all that. I'm going to give you, um, I don't like to do this kind of thing too much, but I'm going to give you a suggestion for a bowing. Is that all right? Yeah. So that part that goes, da -dee, da -dee, ba -da -ba -dee. and then I think if you take that last 16th, up bow, ba -dee, da -da -dee, then you can end the C sharp and the E sharp down bow. Mm -hmm. I think you should try it. Because I have this. I'm breaking right on the G. But so. Up bow. But then the, that's down bow. This is down. Okay. And then up, and then duh, up, down. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. So Yes. Yeah. Okay. The reason I'll, I'm going to tell you why I like that because you want power and you want to attack. And then I feel like that C sharp and that E sharp chord is so unresolved, but so angry. I think the unresolved is like, ah! and so da -dee -da -dee, ba -da -ba -da -ba -dee, da -da. then you can fling your bow. Dee -da -da -dee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can fling it. Try it. Yeah. So this next section, da, da, dee, da, da, dee. what do you feel about that? What is happening there besides the drama? First, I guess, triple the triplet. You know, it's like a big triplet. And I feel like 
it's like this wishy-washy thing. Yeah. yeah. And so you can take a lot of time, slide around. Da -dee, yeah, yeah, dee. Okay. Playing it again. <laughs> Good. I felt like you didn't hold the quarter, the quarter note before the triplet long enough. Okay. Yes. I love that. Let's go on. Take your time. Oh, sorry. Now take your time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dum, bum. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to start in the same place? Uh, why don't you start on the E, the E and the F sharp? Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. So you can hold those out. Long, long. Try that. You're talking about right, the middle. Yeah, right there. Right there. The C and the E, D. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Good. So how would you like to play that whole thing straight through up until here? Okay. So here's what I think needs to happen right now before you play though. I think we need to go through everything that we talked about so that when you play this, you're not gonna think about it. You're gonna be aware of it, but you're gonna just do it. So you're gonna be dramatic, right? You're gonna be larger than life. You're gonna be huge. You're gonna climb the mountain. You're gonna really, when you're getting to the top, you're gonna to be like, <clears throat> and then you're gonna go. But you're gonna be in that Germanic rhythm, mm -hmm. okay? And it's all about the timing and the drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good, good. A lot, a lot more dramatic and a lot and very good, really good. So now you're going to be preparing. You're probably going to have to do all these auditions or something when you get to Boston Conservatory, I would imagine. So from now until then, you're going to be in the practice room with a metronome, being dramatic with a metronome. Doesn't have to be in tempo, just like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, how much you're going to hold how much you're gonna be poised in your drama. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, what I, I think is a good idea. Let's do, do you wanna do a little bit of the 3-2 the section? Sure. Yeah. When I heard this, I thought, I love it. I love the tempo. And I think now you can be more like, <clears throat> like longer, bum. Ba -beam, ba -ba -ba -bee -ba -bee. Everything longer, heavier. Yeah, I have this fear that I'm gonna crunch really bad. 
Ah. Yeah. I didn't hear any crunching. Okay. Yeah. But I think in a way to just let it, you know, like, <clears throat> I think if you just let go, you'll adjust because you're so good. You know what I mean? If you protect yourself, you're never going to know what it feels like to, to let go and mm -hmm. adjust. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So let's do right on the three, two. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that those quarter notes need to be longer. Yum, ba bum. we're gonna have to stop soon but what do you think is more important in this section speed or the heavy the heavy yeah so you've got to figure out um, for yourself what's my tempo because you're the soloist you can do anything you want what's tempo gonna be most comfortable for me to be heavy mm -hmm. for me I couldn't be heavy playing that tempo. I, that's just me though. So I want to be, okay, I'm going to be heavy. I'm going to figure out. Yum, ba bum, ba ya da dee da dee, ooh da da dee, ba bum, ba 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 bee, um ba da dee da da da, ba dee dee. That's a tempo mm -hmm. that I could do. I think we should find that before we leave. Okay. So slow it down just a little bit and see how it feels. That's a good tempo. Okay. So I think for you, I mean, when you're practicing, again, I think this is, the, this is the good spot to do with a metronome. Find your tempo. And the Germanic thing is to hold. So it's normal to want to go be ba 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 be ba, but it's yum bum be ba 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 be ba 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 be ba 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 It's always hold the tempo. Okay. That's a thing to think about. Um, I think we have to stop though, which is too bad. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm okay, good. that was good. So drama, um, the holding back, the Germanic thing. Uh, be comfortable with your concept because that's how you're gonna pick your fingerings and your tempo. But you've got it already, so this is this is the next step that we're working on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you. Have a good year. Good luck. You too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>